Hi, I'm Alexa Big Wharf with Write, Publish, Selling Cat Piggy Press, and today I am going to be showing you how to set up your basic account on Valker. Valker is the place you'll be going to purchase your ISBNs in bulk and making sure that all of your uh, metadata is set up properly for your book to include the imprint that you're going to assign for publishing. So I'm just going to show you a quick tutorial on where to go and how to get set up. Here we go. Okay, so first of all, it's important to know what Valker is, and they're basically the place where most people go to purchase ISBNs, barcodes, and other things. Um, you can get a, 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 an ISBN purchased through Ingram Spark, for example. They buy theirs more than likely from Valker, um, but they can sell you a, an ISBN through there. Some other people can sell you ISBNs. Um, from other places, like when I'm working with clients, I will often sell them an ISBN out of my um, bulk purchasing, or you can go through and get your own. But it's important for you to have your own ISBN, whether you get it through Bowker or through another seller, and not just take the free ISBN that comes with um, Amazon. And that is because then Amazon is is your publisher and you cannot control the things like setting up an imprint and making sure that the metadata is done the way you'd like it and a whole bunch of different reasons that we don't have time to really get into today. So when you are actually going to go to myidentifiers.com, this is a problem for a lot of people. They hear of Bowker and they look for Bowker and they can't find this page because it is actually hidden at myidentifiers.com. So that's the first little secret here. Then you always want to buy in bulk. Why is that? Yes, you could just buy an ISBN, one ISBN for $125, but here you're going to get 10 for $295 and you can get 100 for $575. If you are a small press or publisher or plan on doing many books, I mean many, many books, then this is the way you want to go. Most people are going to be okay right in here. So why do you need 10? Well, you're going to need one for your paper book and if you ever paperback book and if you ever decide to do any other versions of your book, you will need an ISBN for it. Yes, if you only plan on publishing on Amazon KDP, you can get away without having an ISBN. However, if you plan on exporting your book farther out into um, Eba, I mean Apple Books or getting it um, direct onto Barnes and Noble or anything like that. If you're going to do an ebook through Ingram Spark for distribution, through many places for for um, distribution, you will need a separate ISBN for your ebook. And then if you're going to do a hardback cover, if you're a children's book and you're doing both hardcover and paperback, or if you um, are doing a business book or or you just want a hardcover for your book because you like those, you'll need an ISBN for that. And a different cover and you will also need an ISBN for the audio so just there if you just do those even if you don't do them all initially that's four ISBNs that you need so you know you you just buying two you've already paid um, if you buy two separately you've already paid almost as much as you would for ten so you can um, go down um, here's the block for independent or small publishers and um, you can go down here and it'll show you the shopping cart. You put all of those in there. So you're going to go ahead and buy, click on buy now. And if you're not already, um, okay, they're going to try and upsell you. You can continue shopping. Um, my personal advice is not to do any of the upsells. You can get barcodes for uh, free. You can also file copyrights with the U.S. Copyright Office for a very inexpensive amount. And a lot of these things I can show you how to do without upgrading and paying for um, services you don't need to pay for. So then you're just going to go to your cart and it should have you create your account. Do not upgrade. You do not need to get these upgrades. Um, and if you check out... It's going to require you to sign into your account, and if you don't have an account, you're going to go right up here and you're going to register. Okay, so you'll go through, um, just click on here and answer their questions. They'll lead you through to um, all, everything that you need to set up your account. Okay, so that's the easy part. Buying the ISBNs are super easy. So now I've got to go in over here. Once you've created your account, you go in over here and sign in. 
and I'm actually going to remove this because I don't need that right now. So I'm going to go to show you a couple of, of things. First of all, you're most often going to go here to manage your ISBNs. You can look at them in different numbers here. You can look at them display 10. I like to look at 100 at a time because we have a lot of them. And you're going to see information here for you. So once you once you assign, what I normally do is I will assign a title um, to a book and then I will clone it several times afterwards, at least for the um, for the ebook and the paperback book. It doesn't matter if the ISBNs aren't in sequential order, but for me, it's just, it, that's where we're getting to now so that we keep things easily together and organized so that if we're going to grab ISBNs, we can find the ebook, the paperback, the hardcover, and all things right here all together. So when you first go in, you're just going to, it's so, so, so simple. You click on the first available ISBN and you just, follow through the process of what you are doing. So you're going to click in the, the title name, the subtitle, you can add in the main description, you're going to put in the publication date, the language, um, farther on down the page here we have the copyright year and library of control number, if you know this already, the image and all these things, and you go through each um, section and fill out all of the information you have to have at least the um, red asterisks in order to submit the format and size so the medium is it ebook is it print what is it you pick here and then it'll give you once you pick that it'll give you further drop downs here hardback paper book all, all of those things so you're going to go through and fill out as much information as you can now um, if you're just assigning the title at the beginning and you don't know all the information and can't fill it all out, then what you want to make sure you do is only save at the end of each page. Don't hit the submit button until you have all of the information in there. And the reason I say that is because once you submit, it distributes your metadata across wherever it distributes it to. And you want to make sure that all the information is out there. So if people are following new releases, new information, new stuff coming out, and all they have is the ISBN and the title, uh, it doesn't serve as much of a purpose as if you have all the information out there, okay? So I just generally hold on, and that's where you'll see on the main page, if you recall on the main page, it had, some had a red X next to it, some have an orange triangle, and some have a green check. A green check means all the information is in there, it's good to go, it's submitted, you are out, and, and um, everything's out there. An orange means it's been submitted, but it's still updating, and the red means there's um, key information information that's still missing. So as soon as you can get back in there and, and get all of the key information in there. Now this screen right here, the sales and pricing, is probably where you're going to need the most information, the most help on figuring out how to fill it out. Where is the title sold? For us, we almost always start with the United States because we're distributing through Amazon and um, Ingram Spark. I don't know, I'm going to tell you right now that I don't know the answer to the question on if you are based in the UK and you are selling your book um, through Amazon, like I would still guess it's the United States. If you're selling through Ingram Spark, I would still guess it's the United States primarily. However, if you're distributing through a United Kingdom or Spain, New Zealand, Canada, any of these places through their distribution routes, then you're going to go through these channels. If um, if you're going through an, a KDP um, overseas or like Ingram Spark has overseas companies or if you're using something else, go with the company that you are there. But whichever one, whichever one you choose, the next thing, this this thing is the num is the name that goes along with your account as the publisher. So this is what's always going to be assigned to your ISBN. Now you might say, if this is who owns it, how do I? Um, so for people that are either publishing on behalf of someone else or um, selling ISBNs or something like that, the way that you get the um, 
the publisher information to show up differently than this information right here. And this is especially important if you offer services where you are helping people to publish or you're loading their content or anything like that. You need to have this imprint set up before you try and go onto Amazon or it's not it's only going to recognize this number when you add in the ISBN. So uh, you're going to have to create an imprint. So for example, these are these are mine, Cat Biggie Press, Purple Butterfly Press, Write Publish Sell but when I've worked with other people that have wanted to um, publish under their own um, accounts, I've just created an, a separate imprint for them here. And it gives you the directions on how to add an imprint. You go to the imprint under your publisher or company name, click on my account, and just follow the directions here. It's very, very easy. Create space no longer um, exists anymore, so just ignore that. So um, you will have to go to the my account portion up here and go into your profile, your company, those places, and make sure all of that stuff is information is updated. Then you can select the imprint here. And I would give that, a, it's gonna take a day or two for the imprint to be created, and then a day or two some um, for it to be recognized. So make sure you do that in advance um, if you're publishing somebody else's book so you don't go to publish it and realize you're not ready yet because that's a big boo-boo. Then is the, um, usually it's, I put forthcoming if it's a while out or active record if already um, in there. If you have, if you are doing an out of print or anything like that, if you've had a book come down, you can change those. The publication date is self-explanatory. The target audience is often trade, but if you're doing a specialty adult, um, high school, family, juvenile, all those things, young adult, you're going to want to make sure that you clarify that there. And then down here at the bottom of the page, the currency, um, is it in U.S. dollars? What are you selling it for? I usually put the U.S. dollars because that's what I do. And then the retail price, price type, I almost always put in retail price. And then, um, you know, that's it's pretty self-explanatory. The nice thing about Valker is that any, they explain everything right here. If you just hover over the question mark, you, if it doesn't have a red asterisk, you're not required to fill it out. Um, and there's all kinds of other things in there. So this is really where I spend the majority of my time is in the ma uh, manage ISBNs and then within the actual ISBN itself. And then you can just grab this ISBN and copy and paste it wherever you need it. So you just want to make sure that you have them identified properly, add in all your information. Um, oh, so once you've completed that first paperback, then you can hit clone and it'll ask you where to clone it to. I generally just pick the next available number and it will um, it will transfer all the information and then you just have to go in and change the type of book that it is. So make sure everything, make sure that part is absolutely correct before you hit submit because um, it's it, it, you can get the, the type of book changed once you've submitted it. If you've hit paperback and it's really an ebook, but it's kind of a pain in the rear end. So it's better to just do that ahead of time. Um, and that's that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Bowker is pretty user friendly. It just takes a little bit of time playing around with different elements and um, and making sure that you have everything in here. Sorry about that scrolling up and down. Making sure that you have everything in here um, so that you are good to go and all squared away. And then when you go to upload your book to KDP or, or Ingram Spark or wherever you are uploading it, um, you'll just have to put in the ISBN and it will search to make sure that you actually have um, the publishing data and the imprint and will ask you for those things later on. So that is how you um, create your account and how you assign an ISBN and add your information on Valker. I have another uh, short video that will show you some other things about um, transferring things or changing things around. So um, look out for that. And if you have any questions at all, you can reach out to me at Write Publish Cell on Facebook or email me at info at writepublishcell.co. And I hope this was helpful and useful to you.